everyone, Lisa Sainz Peck from Spellbound Miniatures here. Welcome to this mini tutorial today. I'm going to show you how you can design this lovely loft style shelving yourself in design space. And as usual, we've made it in 12th scale, but you can scale it up or down to suit whatever scale you normally work with. So let's head over to design space and I'll show you how to do it. Okay, so here we are in design space and I've got already what we're trying to create but this is just to help you imagine what we're doing and why we're doing it so the first thing we do is get a square and unlock the ratio and we're currently in centimeters this actually is um, one and a quarter inches wide by five inches tall so if we go into settings and imperial you can see that there so we want to make this the same you don't have to you can make it whatever height and width you like but I'm going with that I know this is works in 12th scale so we're going to copy and duplicate that change the color of it so we can see it against the other piece and I want to make this replicate the two millimeter chipboard that I cut the frame in so we go back in to settings and metric and we know that this is in now in centimeters so the Cricut chipboard is two millimeters thick which is 0.2 so we change that to 0.2 centimeters and remember to unlock the ratio there because we want to keep the same height so we now have the equivalent of the side piece there and we need two of those so we copy and duplicate that and then we create another piece and we're going to rotate that to become one of these horizontal pieces obviously that's too wide at the minute we want it to be as wide as the whole piece which is 3.175 centimeters so unlock the ratio and we make it 3.175 and we want several more of those so just copy and paste those you don't have to put them exactly at the minute we'll do that in a second so we're using the black shape as a kind of template and we want to align first of all the left sides together so we click the left side press shift and select the back and you can see over on the layers panel what's been selected and we'll align those to the left and you can see there if you move it it's aligned it to the left and we also can align it the bottoms together and we'll do the same here with the right so we click the right and the back and align them to the right and also to the bottom and you can do more than one piece at a time I'm just doing it step by step here so you're following what I'm doing and then we want to actually that hasn't gone all the way to the right has it there we go align the top up to the top and also make sure that it's centered onto the back piece then we've got these pieces and I deliberately made the top gap smaller I think it looked better than having them equal it's up to you wherever you put these struts so if we select these 
again using shift select them and the back piece and then we want to align them to the left okay so here's just a little um, tip when you're aligning things which is uh, different to Inkscape so in Inkscape you can set it to the thing that you click first or the thing that you click second and align to that in design space it's slightly different so we've got two things here and obviously the green circle is to the front of the black square so if we wanted to align these with their left sides touching if we select the green circle and then shift and select the square and hit align you'll notice that I've put it on a, a line here so it's easier to see the circle moves to the square so if we do a line left the circle moves to the square now if we click the back first and then click the circle while well, we press shift and do a line left it still goes to the left and then if we do a line right it still goes to the right but if we do the circle when it's outside of the square and we do shift and select them both you'll notice that if I did a line right now they both or this one will move to the line up with the circle not the circle move up to the square and so what it does is it will align to the furthest point from what, where you're trying or from what your command is so if we select them both and did a line left now the green circle aligns to the square I'll do that again you do a line right and the square is going to the circle so and it works the same if there was a difference in height and we wanted to select just the squares and if we do a line to the bottom they will line up with the lowest point here whereas if we did a line to the top they come up to meet it so if you have any trouble when you're aligning in any project um, which I was just noticing when I was trying to align my struts then for the frame it wasn't doing what I expected it to do because I'm used to Inkscape so hopefully if you've had a trouble or when you make this project you think oh I'm hitting a line right and everything's shifting it's because what you need to do is make sure that anything that you're aligning to something is sort of within that parameter so if you wanted to align this to the the green square to the black sorry the green circle to the black square make sure that this isn't sticking over or it will move the square to meet the circle so we'll carry back on now with the tutorial but I thought that was just worth noting because I had to play around with it myself it wasn't behaving how I thought it was going to and then because with this gap is as big as we want it to be we don't click the top we click the struts the cross struts here and we do a line and distribute vertically and you'll see that one just moved so now that is equidistant if we would selected the top one it would have put a gap equally all the way down and I wanted to keep that one so that's why I only selected this one down so all we need to do now is to remove this back piece because we don't want to weld that and then we just double check all your sort of edges here that they're where you want this one's higher than that one so um, obviously I'm not making this to match that it's much easier to create the piece you want and then duplicate it this was just a visual reference so um, if you wanted to make that lower you could and then if you wanted to realign 
these ones again just shift and select them all and then again do a line and distribute and it moves them all around again if you're happy with that select everything and weld and then there it is so we know that when we cut this from two millimeter chipboard it is now two millimeters thick that way and two millimeters deep so it looks like the perfect square cross section which is what these shelves are usually made out of so that is the frame at the side so let's now get rid of that one we'll copy and duplicate this one so we've got two matching ones this piece let's color it brown for the wood we'll rotate it and well, it really needs to fit in this gap here so we know that that was 3.175 minus two lots of 0.2 so that's 0.4 and so we could make that just to fit exactly but when you're going to paint the frame it'll become slightly thicker so I think it's always a good idea to give yourself a little bit more of a gap than you think and if we unlock it you could literally just do it to fit and I think the actual size if that is 3.175 that is 2.7 my maths is yeah 2.775 but that fits exact and probably we want a little bit more of a gap so I would be tempted to round that down to 2.75 and then or you could do even less and then it's up to you how wide you do it so now we've got our shelf you can we've got the right depth of the shelf we want to decide on the width of the whole unit so you could make it make sure we unlock the ratio again make it say six foot wide um, or four foot wide it's completely up to you you can make them to fit whatever space you've got you just want to imagine that you have a bit of an overhang this would be rotated um, and you'd have an overhang each side so once you know the width of the whole unit you can then make your cross struts um, and I made mine four mil high so let's go back into metric unlock the ratio and this height here was four mil so that's 0.4 and again if we were going to make this four foot wide we might want to make these three and a half feet and that gives you a little overhang so instead of five inches we'll say 3.5 and that might not be quite enough overhang there so let's go for three Yep, so if you can imagine these side bits would be turned to face you, they're glued onto that and then this fits onto the shelves. So we'll change these to green and then copy and duplicate them. I put one above each shelf there so that things didn't fall off the back and then we would also similarly want one two three four shelves and that is what we would do so then if we clicked make it, it puts them into mats by color but actually if you're going to cut everything out of chipboard which I did you could change them all to one colour 
it's up to you. You might want to do the shelves in basswood to get a wood grain effect. I always like to space my pieces out a bit more when I'm cutting thicker materials. So cut everything in either chipboard or chipboard and basswood or whatever you're making and then we'll go back to the studio and I'll show you how I constructed them and painted them. So this is how they come off the mat and um, the chipboard sometimes um, it cuts cleanly but can lift the layers slightly. If this happens you can run a bead of super glue along the edges and then that just seals everything and I use clothes pegs to hold them upright. I put in little drawing pins to create support so that turned upside down when I sprayed it it didn't stick to the mat I was spraying it on and then to construct it I put the crossbars on my bench I brought the side frames up and glued them onto the ends of the crossbars and then simply glued the shelves in place you could glue the crossbars and side frames together and then paint it's up to you which order you do it in and you could leave the shelves loose too. You can see here I've done them in both 6th scale and 12th scale. You can also make them wider or narrower and have a couple of sets next door to each other in the shop if you'd like as well. I hope you have fun making this project and if you get into difficulties we are going to put the SVG for this in our online store too. Thank you for joining me today and I'll see you soon.